Okay, now importing a video is just as easy as importing anything else. We go to the File menu, we go to Import, and uh, you'll notice we have an option now for importing video. So we'll click on that option, and we actually get a whole separate dialog for this. So we're looking for one that's on our computer. Most of the time that's what you're going to be doing. So we'll click on Browse, and in your Files folder, you should find a file called MotionPaths.mov. Now this is a free tutorial that's on the School of Flash blog, and we've already covered how to create motion paths in uh, Flash CS4, so uh, this particular video isn't really going to be very useful to you other than the fact that we're going to put it in our website now. Now this is a smaller version of that tutorial. It's just uh, 320 pixels wide by 240 pixels tall. And we'll, we'll just select that and click on Open. And it says the selected file does not appear to be supported. Uh, and that's because it's an MOV file, and what they suggest here says, if necessary, launch Adobe Media Encoder to convert this file to FLV or F4V. So we need to open up Adobe Media Encoder, and you might be asking, well, what if I don't have that? Well, if you have Flash CS4, then you have Adobe Media Encoder. And you'll see down here at the bottom, we can click on this button to launch Adobe Media Encoder. Uh, so you don't have to find the file or the program, you don't have to hunt it down yourself. It's located down here. So we're going to launch Adobe Media Encoder. And it says, after encoding your video, switch back to Flash and click the Browse button to select your newly encoded video. So we'll click on OK. And Adobe Media Encoder will start to load. And you'll see that after everything finishes loading, it loads that particular file for you. Now, if it for some reason doesn't load that file for you, you can click on Add and then browse through your, your window viewer here to pick the file you want but it should automatically put that there for you and uh, it also tells you what format it's going to convert it to it gives you a preset and uh, now we can click on the settings button here to customize the settings we want to use if we click on that we have a number of different settings here uh, we have the source file we can crop it if we want to we click on crop and then just change the handles here however we don't want to do that we want to leave it alone we can choose our format over here we can also uh, choose a number from a number of different presets that are available to us. Or we can just look through these tabs to figure out the options we want to use ourselves. Now for audio, you'll notice that stereo is selected, but it doesn't really matter if this particular file is stereo or mono. It's okay if, if it's mono, and mono will save us a little bit on file size, so we'll go ahead and change that to mono. For video, Onto VP6 is suggested. Swords and Spark is an older uh, codec that um, used to be the main codec for Flash, but Onto VP6 is a newer codec. If you have a green screen or something like that on your recording and you've already um, picked out an alpha channel for it, you can encode that alpha channel here. Um, and that's a little bit advanced for this, but uh, you can certainly do that. And then you can choose frame rate. I'm going to leave it same as source. You can play around with any of these options. We can also trim the video if we don't want to use the whole thing by dragging in these handles here. Uh, so you basically cut off the beginning and ending if you wish. However, I'm going to stretch those back out. And actually, I'm not going to stretch those out. For this particular, since we're just doing a quick tutorial here on how to do this, I'm going to make it a lot shorter so that it won't take as long to encode. So we'll just make this about one minute long. And uh, that way it will encode a little bit quicker so we can move on and show you how to do everything. Okay. So you can play around with those settings, but anyways, once you're done with those settings, you'll click on OK. And then once you're ready to actually convert it, we'll click on Start Queue. So when you click on Start Queue, it will show you at the bottom how much time is left. And uh, this is going to go pretty quickly since we have a very small video and uh, it's only one minute long. So it happened really quickly. Now we have the check mark there saying that that particular file has finished. So we can now click on it and remove it from our queue. It'll ask you if you're sure. You can click on yes. It doesn't delete anything from your computer. It just removes removes it from that queue. And then we can hit command Q if you're using a Mac to close the uh, media encoder or just click the X button if you're using a PC. Okay, so once we get back to the import video, we'll click on browse. And uh, I accidentally saved it in the chapter 49 folder here. There's motionpaths.flv. Uh, so I'm going to cancel real quickly and I'm going to jump into Finder and I'm going to move that from Chapter 49 into the Files directory there. There we go. 
Okay, so then we'll jump back into import video. We'll go to browse inside the files folder. We'll find motionpaths.flv, which is the file we just converted. We'll click on open. And then uh, the next option is to load the external video with playback component or embed it in FLV and or embed the FLV in the Swift file and play it in the timeline. Now you're usually not going to embed it in the FLV file itself. Uh, the only reason you would want to do that is if you wanted to um, create some kind of animation on top of the movie, uh, kind of like a Roger Rabbit type of thing where you have some live action and then on top of the live action you also have some cartoon characters or maybe you have some uh, a animated titles that you wanted to include in the movie that you wanted to animate in Flash uh, in an instance like that then you would want to embed it in the Swift file but that would make the Swift file really bulky so it's a lot easier uh, if you don't need it tied to any kind of Flash animations it's a lot easier to just load the external video with a playback component so we'll choose that we'll click on continue and then we can choose the skin the default skin is shown here we can click in this drop down and it shows you all kinds of different skins. Um, anything that says skin over will have the controls on top of the video hovering over the video itself. Anything that says skin under, it will put the skin underneath the video. So let's go ahead and choose one of the skin under. Um, and we have skin under and then a number of different options. These options basically just allow us to choose uh, which uh, playback controls are going to be included. So let's say that we want play, seek, mute, or maybe uh, play, stop, play, stop, seek, mute, vol. Uh, so that'll give us uh, mute control, volume controls, and then your play, stop, and seek buttons. Uh, you can also choose your color. We can choose a different color if we want to, like so. And, uh, and there we go. So we can click on continue. And it will tell you, this is very, very important. It will tell you where the video is that you're using. It will tell you where the video will be located um, and this is a relative path relative to your Swift file so if it just has the name of the file here it basically means that that FLV file is going to be located in the same folder as your Swift file and so when you upload this to the internet you need to upload the Swift file and this FLV file into the same folder also there's going to be an extra Swift file um, that will also need to be uploaded to the uh, server and that Swift file is the Swift file for your skin so if we click on go back here, we chose this skin under play stop seek mute vol, and you'll notice it has a dot swift extension. This is actually a file that you're going to need to upload. So we're going to find this dot swift file in the same folder as our regular swift file, and we're going to upload that to the internet as well. So we'll click on continue, we'll click on finish, and it's gathering the metadata for our file. And then if we go back to our file here, we can see our video and we can drag this over here into that side window and our video is ready to be played. So let's hit command enter to test our movie. We're on the home page. Everything's fine. The about page, the products page, and we can see our video start playing. With Flash CS4, Very good. Uh, so you have all of these controls. We can control the volume here. We can mute the volume by clicking on the mute button. Uh, but that video is now available to us. And as you saw, it was very, very easy to do. Now there is one problem with our video that we need to discuss. And we'll get to that in the next video. But let me go ahead and show you what the problem is. If we're playing our video, and we, then we go back to another page, which is the about page, you can still hear the video playing. And then if we go back to products again, It'll start the video over and we can still hear the sound from the last video so now it's all very confusing because we can hear two videos going on at the same time. Uh, so again we'll get to that uh, problem and we'll talk about how to fix that problem in the next video. For now let's just save our file. We'll go to scene one, we'll go to file, save as, and we've made it to chapter 50. So we'll create a chapter 50 folder and we'll save that as index.fla. So we'll save that and we'll move on with the next video.